Hello and welcome to South County Spotlight on Frontier Community Access Television. As always, I'm your host, Chris Collins. We're back in studio. Election Day is coming up in Conway, and we have a race for the Board of <coughs> Selectmen for the seat being vacated by the retiring Jim Moore. One of the candidates for that seat is Gerald Levite, who joins me here in studio. Uh, Jerry, thanks for coming, and I appreciate you making the time. Well, thank you for asking me. Uh, running for the, for the big seat on the, on the Conway Board. And I, I want to ask you, first of all, people who don't know who you are, give us a little background on who Jerry Levite is. Well, <clears throat> I um, lived in Gill for, until I went into the uh, <clears throat> Air Force mm -hmm. in 61. I uh, was in the Air Force after four years of being uh, there and going to New Zealand. And actually, I went down to the South Pole. Oh, wow. You know, one so time is enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And um, came back and, and tried to, <clears throat> to work with the community, and I joined the police department in Savannah, Georgia. Really? And for four years, yes, I I heard that's a beautiful town. It's a beautiful town. Um, there, it, it is in the south, and I'm a Yankee from Massachusetts. <laughs> I bet they loved you, right? Oh, <laughs> yes. They, want, they kept asking me when I was going to go home, <laughs> and I did. Uh, I, after the four years, I returned back in 1969. Yes, <laughs> 1969, and I worked uh, at Oxford Pickle. Yep. I was a blind man for a while until on um, December 7th of uh, <clears throat> 1970. I um, was promoted or accepted as a police officer in Northampton. Yeah, right. And uh, I, I uh, went through the, the ranks and went to a number of schools. And uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we came across the fact that all the most, well, all the, the officers were male, except for one mm -hmm. female who dubbed as a, a, a clerk mm -hmm. and a female officer. Back in uh, 79, uh, there was um, a great a number of people that retired, mm. nine, nine of them. And the department had to readjust themselves because we had four female officers, mm. candidates, and we had three Hispanic males that came in there, and we needed to bring everybody together. And it was remarkable from the individuals that were there that we, we did. And they, they couldn't do enough. They, they uh, sat down and went through all the streets in, in <clears throat> uh, Northampton for all the, the young and gave them little booklets and such, and this is what you do in there. And then we sent them to training, they went to academies and so forth. And uh, they're, they're still working. And well, I think it's, and, law enforcement has changed a lot over the years, but I mean, it, it's the, <clears throat> the police officers and police departments have to do so much more now. There are many social service agencies almost rather than just about crime and punishment. <clears throat> There's so many do's and don'ts that uh, it's, it's, a, it's amazing that they, you, we can even do the job. Yeah. And then um, defensive tactics, you know, you have uh, different sprays, guns, uh, ways to, to uh, turn around and, and uh, make people aware of the fact that you do have to yeah. abide by the rules. Well, we're going to talk about the law a little bit because there's going to be a lot of legal things coming up that Conway is going to be dealing with. Mm. Um, so you, got, you retired from the police department, yeah. Yeah. and now here you are running for selectman. And I want to ask you about some specific issues. The first one, the big one, the one you found this out the other night when you met the people, is the pipeline. Everybody's talking about the pipeline, even though Kinder Morgan has sort of <clears throat> pulled back with plans to construct it. Um, what are your views on the pipeline? And I know everybody is asking you how you'd vote if it came in front of the board <clears throat> if you were elected. So give us, give us a thumbnail. What do you think about it? Well, first of all, I've, I've, not made, I've not had enough information to even come up to, a, some, to determine mm -hmm. what my decision would be. I've been asked that more than who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and my, my uh, answer to them is that if an elected is <clears throat> to the select board, 
that I am bound by, by law that the majority has voted and I will support their request as much as I can. Um, it, it is a question that concerns a lot of people and it, uh, I, I hope that it does come to task that it does not go through, but that doesn't mean I made my decision on that. My right to privacy as to whether I do or don't is under the Constitution. It does seem like a lot of people are making decisions uh, based on candidates, based on their opinion on this issue. But I'll ask you about a specific part of it, because on town meeting floor coming up, uh, Conway's going to have to decide whether it wants to support Montague's legal fight, which will involve spending town money to help defray legal expenses <clears throat> that are still ongoing, even though Kinder Morgan's pulling back from construction. Would you support Conway spending money to help that legal fight? No. And why? Well, because there, there was a long discussion, and it got to the point where it was almost, no, you, you've got to end it here. Mm -hmm. We'll come back when everybody cools down a little bit. Uh, I know that people are really in touch and sensitive to it, and, and it's just nature. And you've got to accept the other side. I think, are you concerned that if, I mean, a lot of people are fearing that this whole Kinder Morgan pullback is a bit of a straw man, and in fact, they're going to come back with a different plan that's somehow less offensive. I don't know. Does it not make sense to have a legal strategy in place, though, for when that, if that does happen? Well, yes, yeah, so you just can't, you know, just lay down your guns and walk away from right. the battlefield just right. because someone says we're not going to fight today. Uh, you do have to, and uh, I don't, there's not enough information in, to my part of town where we can draw uh, a, a positive direction in which to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to continue. I myself, um, can I say this on it? I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I smell a skunk. You think so? Yes, I don't have to see it. Okay. I smell it. And, and that means to the pipeline. Yeah. <clears throat> you think maybe there's more politics here than real threat? I, <clears throat> I feel this way. If you don't get answer on the front door, you go to the back door. Yeah, yeah so you think that this is not over yet? Oh, no. Yeah. I don't. No. Well, you're talking billions of dollars. Exactly. And, and it's not that I'm for it. It just billions of dollars, and someone's just going to say, ah, let's go home. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's the, the, the genuine fear that I have as well, is that we have not seen the last card played in this particular no, hand. No. And, 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 so. I, and I praise the, the, the representatives that have really gone out of their way. They really helped. Let's talk about another environmental issue, and that is this discussion about whether Conway should do something about their sewer, a sewer system or a community-wide septic system. I know that right now there is no sewer that goes through Conway, and the idea that was being broached in front of the planning board was to put community-wide septic in place. It's very expensive, as you know, to replace a, a, a septic system. I, I, I learned that the hard way when I was a, a landowner. Um, what do you think? Is a community-wide septic system a way for Conway to go? I think eventually uh, it's going to have to be. Um, the water, I believe, is owned by the state, mm -hmm. and they have to. Well, we've seen what's been happening all over. Uh, pipes are getting old. Oh, Northampton's yeah. going to be in a real deep hole because uh, they were, were told years ago that, well, mm, the piping has got to be replaced. Sure. Um, <clears throat> now, back to the, the original thing the septic system. The septic system is that I know that there's been three on the main River Street that have been replaced. And trying to be fair about it, if, how is that going to work? How, it, it, there's not enough yet. It is a, a plan that needs to be really, really debated. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, originally um, they didn't want to get everyone scared. Sure. And I know there's some places that have spent oh, only three, four thousand dollars just to come up to code. Exactly, and it's twenty to replace a whole system. Yes, and uh, then the last uh, question that I have is that uh, how far do we go into this? Uh, this uh, could involve doing the whole system. Where is the system going to go? And 
is, is it really going to work? We put this in and then the, the uh, United States or state of Massachusetts says, oh no, you've got to do the whole right, thing. Yeah, the regulation changes. So now exactly. you've got this in the ground. And you say, well, what am I going to do with it? Exactly. Well, that's what happened with Massachusetts with Title V is they had regulations. People built the specifications. Then they changed the regulations. So now when you go to sell your property, you have to conform to the new regulations. And that's why people are putting you know, tens of thousands of dollars and losing all profit margins on yes. sales. It's awful. You, you, <clears throat> and and uh, that's the biggest question that I, I have. I do have a septic system, by yep. the way, um, up on top of the hill. We don't have cable, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I have a dish. Right. <laughs> that doesn't help public access television. But I know when the fire way. clock plane <laughs> takes out of Springfield. Oh, you do? Okay. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> you know, everything goes... Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> well, that's good, I suppose. But uh, the other question about the septic thing is, where do you put it? I mean, then you run into NIMBY issues. We don't want it in our backyards, that kind of thing. I mean, where does it go? It's a lot of questions. Well, plus we're there. Uh, and I'm, I'm just catching little pieces here. And sure. There. I'm, um, where they want to basically put the whole thing is rear, near a river. Right. So there you have another situation that if we have another Irene and Lee back to back. Wow. Uh, that put us way back. And those, by the way, are going to be more the rule rather than the exception. I think as climates change and weather patterns change, you're going to have more, not less of these. And I think most emergency management officials will agree with that. Well, look at what happened to Houston. My wife just came off of, uh, of a cruise, yeah. and her, so her sister lives on the other side of Houston. And I mean, 20 some odd inches of rain. Yeah, nuts. nuts. They didn't, the sister in law didn't get it, but. Uh, Somebody did, and I don't believe they had any. Uh, well, this is the video. Flood, flood uh, insurance. Uh, no. Why would you have flood insurance in Houston, Texas? Because I mean, you never had rain for the last <laughs> yeah, eleven weeks. Exactly. Um, I mean, months. Exactly. It's just bizarre. So, uh, yeah, I, I get it. Let's talk a little bit about um, another issue that's come up. There's been talk about putting a cell phone tower in Conway. There's been talk about building out so places like your house, which doesn't have access to broadband, I don't believe, do you? No, yeah. no, that's a sore subject. I know, I, I bet it is a sore <laughs> subject, but I guess the question is, if you're a selectman, you have an opportunity to be able to, to change policy or at least influence policy to change that. What are your thoughts on that? Well, out where I live, um, <clears throat> fishing game just uh, gobbled up another 129 acres of land. And we have <clears throat> another of state forest mm. next to me is a reservation of uh, the <clears throat> old I'm trying to think of his name that um, I know the place you're talking yes. about <clears throat> it'll come to me in just a minute it's okay uh, <laughs> and there's no way when originally they came out they said all right in a mile we have to have four households right. to be able to support that. And we, we just, there's no way we're going to be able to do that because it's all state land. Yep. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, for other, where it goes anywhere else, there's an awful lot of rock. Oh, yeah. And there's an awful lot of hills. And I think if they can find some place uh, that will get as many people as possible. I know that uh, there was a paper issued stating this, that there's a $5 million yes. uh, grant of some sort. Which the state is, seems to be holding up for reasons passing understanding. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, whole okay. other, it's a whole other <laughs> issue. <laughs> uh, Feel free to cut loose, Jerry. This is, this is not live television. <laughs> no, but I want to live a little longer too. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> What were you we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, technology is always changing too, and I think that um, yes. it's, it's, it's possible. I mean, maybe in the future they'll be able to find a way to program your dish to be able to pick up that stuff. But I mean, it, it doesn't seem like the companies, like you said, want to make the investment, which is why government's gotten involved and why they have this last mile initiative. Anything that involves making money, I, I guarantee you, is going to have to change somewhere along the line, and you're going to have to t spend for more. It's no different than solar. Exactly. We put up solar. How'd okay. that work for you? Very well. Yeah. 
However, you have to do your homework. Oh, really? Oh, yes. There'll be people that will come to you and they'll say, okay, for $3,000, you sign right here, give me, and we'll be back and we'll dance. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, they must, <laughs> they must have got captured by somebody because <laughs> they never came back. <laughs> We had a very good we had a very good representative, and I'll have to give my wife the credit that uh, she did a lot of work on her side, and she were, worked for the USDA office. Oh, okay. oh yes, <laughs> and uh, knows all the little crooks and nannies there. W wives are such they save us so many times, guys like you and me, Jerry. Without yeah. the wives, where would we be? Uh, I wouldn't be here talking <laughs> to you. Exactly. Did she push I'd be you out there with a pan in my hand? <laughs> Did she push you to run? Did she like the idea of you running for selectman, your wife? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go home? Or... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just no. asking questions. No, I'm just I love curious. her to death, and she'll go along with me in what I do. Fair enough. Okay, well, that's good. That's good to know, because without, without a wife behind you, it's going to be tough for you to you come home late Mondays, and you're going to get a lot, of, uh, a lot of guff. Where you been? Uh, let's talk about other, some other capital spending issues. Um, town's looking to buy a new fire truck, and they're going to do some other capital measures. Right. And one of the things that always is an argument in every town is where to draw the line on capital spending. I mean, should, how much is too much capital spending long term, and can the town afford to buy things like that? Fire truck? Yeah. What's a life worth? There you go. Good point. Have you ever gone into a burning building? Not on purpose, no. I have. I had to. Well, I mean, police officer. Uh, yes. Uh, and <clears throat> is money the most important thing in this? No, I agree. no it isn't. Uh, <clears throat> and are there, are there I, areas of capital spending that are more important? Is, is public safety spending more important than, say, something else? It's about priorities. It's all, yes, it's all priorities. I think wherever it uh, involves life, it's more important. Uh, I mean, building another bridge, well, you may be able to get across another way. Uh, but uh, to bring back another person or life, um, no, it's not. One of the debates that's come up a lot in Deerfield, Sunwood, and Whaley has been the idea of South County EMS. Is it a good thing? Now, Conway is not currently part of South County EMS. Yeah. Do, you, do you think it would be a good idea for Conway to consider joining as part of that organization? That's in, in regards to... Uh, um, it's, yeah. it's, uh, EMS service, basically, paramedic level service. Uh, Conway's not part of that cooperative currently, but they could be if the town decided to, to go that route. <clears throat> it could be. I'm not really schooled that much mm -hmm. on it, but it is very comforting to know that uh, all the individuals I do associate with and do know that are you know, on the ambulance committee, mm -hmm. they go way out of their way. Sure. They, they spend hours and hours to, to serve the town. And they don't get enough credit as it is. No. And I mean, if you've been into situations or a horrible car crash or something, um, you, you see the ambulance come, yeah. you know they're in good hands. It's a good crew. Yeah, so, oh yes. And the police officer making all the reports and everything, you need to do that. And, uh, <clears throat> they just don't get enough credit. Well, if you do get elected, you're going to have a, a, a friend on that board, Bob Baker, who's the current fire chief. Yes. And I know that yeah. we, we, whenever we talk to Bob about fire stuff, and he's very, he's all over the EMS. He knows all about what goes on. So mm -hmm. I know that he's a big supporter of that, those kinds of things as well. You mentioned the, uh, the state protecting land. Is too, is too much land being protected in Conway right now, do you think? I mean, it, it, is a, it seems like there's a lot of open space, and, you know, we don't want it to be developed, but I don't think anybody's eyeing Conway as a, a large-scale development spot. No, but they're buying up all, all big pieces. They, yeah. they bought uh, that Flag Mountain. Yep, that's right. And there we've, uh, and I was uh, advised the other day that on East Guinea Road, which is off of yep. Main Poland Road, that someone is down there, and they have people uh, looking at taking another 100 some acres. Um, pretty soon, the state's going to own itself. <laughs> well, I remember hearing somebody say recently that once the state is done, you'll only have developable land and protected land. There'll be nothing else. There's, there's a, I've read the 
the list of what we were going to discuss yeah. in the town meeting. And yes, that it's something about how we're going to pull houses closer together yeah. to, to do this. Um, you ever been in a housing project? <laughs> yes. It's fine if you all get along together. <laughs> it's hell if you don't. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, go back and forth. The radio's too loud. The dogs barking. Yeah. The kids scream. Uh, maybe not go that far. Right. But why should we crunch ourselves yeah. together? Because a lot of our homes, like I have 33 acres, you know, part in in Asheville and the other in in Conway. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to all of a sudden have five or six houses around me right. unless, of course, it was my Might get you cable. My can. <laughs> <laughs> it might get you cable, though. Well, <laughs> yeah, that. Yes. But let's talk about housing complexes because there's a proposal right now to put a senior housing complex on some town-owned land. Yes. And there's been a lot of back and forth about that. You know, everybody says there's definite need for senior housing, but is this the right plan? Where do you stand on that? I, well, again, um, <clears throat> There, these are uh, questions that people have come forth with. Some work is done. I know there's some money that has been yep. uh, some uh, more involvement, discovery whether we can do this or not. There was some plan uh, four or five years ago yep. where we could dig down so that if we did have a flood, that the, the houses would be protected on the town land. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, I still go for the fact that don't don't underestimate Mother Nature. Yeah. If you find a place that really, you know, where you can get to it, available, yes. Um, then you you come into the fact. Well, are the, these units, what what type of individual is going to be? Yeah, is living gonna, there is it going to be if, low income? Or, are, yeah, exactly. or are they handicapped or yeah. not? Where are they going to walk? You're not going to put them on a hill. Right. They'll get down, but they won't get back up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> and they need to take all of these things together. And you know, sometimes I, I sit back and say, well, you guys have got a heck of a lot of homework in front of you, and you don't have a lot of time to do it. Exactly. And you always try to be right. And there's always something that comes up. Then the dollar figures. And no matter what you do, you're never going to please everybody. That's the toughest oh, part I hear oh. from town officials is, just, is you can't make everybody happy. And, and depending on which yeah. battle you pick, it could be a one-term selectman just based on the, the wrong, the, if you pick the wrong fights. Yeah, I mean, mm, uh, one wrong move. I mean, you keep thinking about everything and it's just say. Well, if you're elected, Ooh. I guess this goes back to temperament. I mean, what kind of a selectman would you be if, if people come to you with contentious issues? I assume you want to hear all sides, or will you be kind of a guy that at some point will draw a line in the sand and say enough is enough? I found, well, I, I went to Babson <clears throat> College Wellesley, and we had a uh, human resource course. Oh, yeah. And uh, let me tell you, I said, hey, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know, I've been through all this. I got done and I talked, I think his name was Dick Bishop. I said, I got to tell you something. I said, I came here and I hated it. I said, I'm leaving here and I'm loving it. <laughs> I said, So you learned a lot. Yes. You get more out of someone if you listen to them mm -hmm. and you don't turn around and take make them part of the problem. They're coming to you and telling you in a nice way, your, your reaction should be, okay, I'll get back to you. I'll do what I can. If I can't do it, I'll get someone else that can. You want to hear stories? I, we don't have any time. Left. <laughs> but your word is your bond, I guess, is the bottom line. Yes, here. yes. you got to be honest with people. Yeah, it, it's going to you got to treat them like people. And in a lot of ways, you know, when you call up someone and say, well, you know, you need maybe some sand. and not a, You need some sand or you need some salt somewhere, and the phone goes down. Mm. Say, wait a minute. What did I say that was wrong? Right. Don't I pay for the sand? Don't I pay your salary? I'm not saying that, that but that's how. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yes. Um, well, a lot of times, you know, as selectman, you're going to get calls about that kind of stuff, and you're like, I don't mind. You're like the first person people call as the representative that identified the most with the town, and you've got a board that's very responsive. I mean, the current board they work well mm -hmm. together, Baker Moore and, yeah. and and John O'Rourke. Do uh, you think you can work with Bob and John? 
Oh, yes. Yes. Do you know them at all, either one of them? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, yes. Oh, you got to, don't forget Tom. No, and Tom, of course, the town administrator. I think he's doing a pretty good job. I yes, mean, yeah. yes. Yes, he, he <laughs> yeah, I think he's got a, a, lot, of, a lot of work yeah. ahead of him. And I know a lot of, a couple of things that we discussed yesterday, in fact, that um, we've got another place on the river that's leading away. Mm -hmm. One of the bridges that go to North Poland Road is really top priority to be replaced. And, it, and then all of a sudden we got this, this meeting coming and then we got the election mm -hmm. and, and he, I would imagine that he can't do a lot of things until he finds out who are my three people Correct. that I'm going to be doing. But I think, I think Tom has a pretty good understanding of what his, his, pro, his obstacles are. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of governments were moving obstacles and barriers for <clears> progress. And I think he, as much as any town administrator I've seen in this county, understands what he's limited by. Yes. The only thing that's happened to him is that he no more and gets this done, and in comes the truck right. and dumps his other stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, and I can assume, I empathize with him in, in many ways because I had the same thing. I get one thing done next. Yeah. No. It's a tough gig. It used to be a part-time job. No more. No, no. no. no not with the rules and regulations that the, the state has and even what we've adopted up yeah. there. I only have a couple of minutes left. I wanted to give you a chance at the end to sort of make a final statement to the voters of Conway, why they should elect <clears throat> Jerry Levite to the top policy board, the Board of Selectmen. <clears throat> well, to all the citizens and... In Conway, uh, I, I know that uh, what you what you think, what you want, and which, which direction you want to go. And I'm uh, retired, I, and I've done a lot of work with people, and that's what it is: it's people. We come up with ideas, we build houses and, and highways and so forth. And um, I just hope that you see that. I, they say, well, what do you have to offer? My experience, all different, up and down, and uh, like working for the farm. I worked for Barway Farm yep. and the Belden Farm. You get to know people, and that's the main thing. Keep your focus on the people, not, <clears throat> I mean, on the problem, not the people. I get that right. On the people. <clears throat> Keep the the the, pro, the particular problem apart from any personality conflict. There you go. There, I finally got it out. There you go. Election day in Conway is May 12th. <clears throat> Jerry Levitt's been my guest. He is one of two candidates for the board of selection. A uh, selectman. Make sure you get out and vote on May 12th, and uh, we'll see you down the road. And if you win, we'll be happy back. I'm sure in the future. If you win, you know you're going to be on TV every week with the Conway Select Board. That's okay. You got to look at me. <laughs> That's right. Thanks for watching. That's been South County Spotlight for all of us here at FCAT. Have a good day.